Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. This is your host, Melina. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I myself did. I spent some time with my mom and my sister, and it was really nice. We hadn't spent time since the holidays, and, you know, usually it's like we're going somewhere or we're in a rush, but this weekend we spent time at home. We ate and we made some TikToks. And I can't believe I just said that, but I've been making TikToks. If you guys haven't followed me on TikTok, follow me at Unbreakable Latina. I've been posting on there, gaining a lot of fo new followers, new listeners, and I appreciate all the feedback I'm getting. I am really proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone. It's something that makes me uncomfortable. I'm usually more comfortable with talking and not putting a face to the voice but it is what it is this is a new era i feel like an old lady but it's been great it's been great to connect with other people hey guys i wanted to take a quick break to thank you all for your support when i first started the podcast i felt lost i didn't even know where to begin but thankfully i stumbled upon anchor anchor is a platform that i use to make my podcasts I can record, edit, and distribute my podcasts on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. So it's a one-stop shop. And the best part is that it's free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to start your podcast today. On today's episode, I wanted to discuss machismo culture. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up is just because... During the holidays, I was shopping. I was at a store, I think it was Ross, and I was looking through the shirts. And I overhear these two ladies having a conversation in Spanish. And she's like, oh, like this blast will look so pretty on you when a lady tells the other lady. And the lady goes, oh no, él no me deja que me ponga ropa así. He doesn't let me wear clothes like that. And I was so shocked. I, I wanted to tell her, no, like, wear whatever you want. You're cute. Like, why are you listening to somebody? And it just got me thinking that machismo culture still exists. Machismo is defined as a strong sense of masculine pride. In Latin American culture, machismo is a social behavior pattern in which the Latino male exhibits an overbearing attitude to anyone in a position he perceives as inferior to his. So this got me thinking of how I grew up. I remember as a child when we would have like carne asadas or family parties, any dinners, any get togethers, the men would always eat first and then it was the kids and then it was the moms and all the, all the women. And I never understood that. I would always be so confused. I'd be like, why can't we just all eat together? And always the men got the hot plates with the tortillas calientitas. And the women always ate last. Until this day, I think my mom is so used to that culture that she's always the last one to eat. I also have an early memory from when I was seven years old. I remember my mom was in the hospital to ha when she had my little sister. Um, it was 1997, I believe. And I had never, ever seen my dad cook anything in the kitchen. The only thing I always saw him do was like barbecue on the grill. But I had never, I didn't even know my dad knew how to cook. So what, I walk in one day while my mom's at the hospital. I walk into the kitchen and I see my dad making himself like an egg or frijoles or something. And I remember I was just like, what are you doing? And my dad was like, cooking. And I was like, you know how to cook? And I. When I was thinking about making this podcast, I remembered that. And I don't have a lot of memories from my childhood. I just have like really s uh, scattered memories. But I remember I was so shocked. Like I didn't even believe him. I was like, no, you didn't make that. Like someone else made that. And I was just like, damn, like my dad never really stepped in the kitchen. I was always a little rebel child. And my dad was the type that liked to have a hot plate all the time. He didn't want to eat 
in a disposable plate. It always had to be like a fan, not a fancy plate, but it had to be a ceramic plate or whatever. And I remember one time we were having dinner and my mom's like, you know, attending to him. Like I said, she was always last to eat at the table. But like growing up, I used to talk back and I would stand up and I, I was very opinionated and I still am. But I remember telling my dad, like, or my dad was like, oh, like, no hay toallitas, like, there's no napkins here. And I was like, yeah, there is. They're right there. You know where they're at. You have two feet, like, get up and go get them. And my dad just looked at me like, what the heck? And I know that in our culture, the reason that women attended to men all the time was because usually men were the breadwinner. But, you know, roles change uh, uh, as we people came to the U.S. now women work too so my mom was a worked and my dad was very demanding and i did not understand why he couldn't do it himself and i told myself i would never ever end up with someone that wants me to have things like that all the time like very machista growing up in our culture men are always men were always superior to women no matter what and I think it's not only our culture, but it's more in our culture, uh, being manly, not having emotions, being controlling. It, it ran, at least how I grew up, I saw it a lot. I saw it in other family members or like another example was my mom would always, whenever she would cut our hair, my dad hated us to cut our hair. I don't know why, but it's the whole thing. Like, some men just don't like you to cut your hair. And, I mean, I always had long hair, but anytime I would get a trim or something, my dad would notice right away. And my mom would always be tell me and my sister, No le digan a su padre que les corte el pelo. Don't tell your dad that I cut your hair because he's going to get mad. So, <laughs> my sister would be like, Dad, we didn't go cut our hair. And it was so funny, but... Even till this day, like, I remember one time someone asked me if I, or have you ever dyed your hair? Or would you ever dye your hair? And I was like, no. And like, oh, it's because your dad doesn't let you, huh? And I'm like, what? Like, no, <laughs> I just don't want to dye my hair. But it's so common in our culture. I think machismo culture is so toxic because it messes up a lot of men and a lot of women. And for men... In our culture, if a man has too many emotions, he's not manly enough. Men are expected to dominate women all the time. And if you let a woman dominate you, then you're a mandilon or you're whipped. And I think this really messes up a lot of guys and they grow up like this. Like, I once dated this guy that one time was like don't you think your shorts are too short and i'm like whoa like my dad never commented anything on what i would wear like you should never comment on what i wear and even like in other relationships that i've had i remember in a past relationship one of the guy's um family members was like wow like he serves you food like wow i never i never would have thought and i was just like things are changing like we're not in mexico anymore like we both work we both put to this relationship like it shouldn't have to be one-sided and i'm not saying that you shouldn't cater to your man i'm just saying that it should be equal and for this reason a lot of the roles are messed up because people are confused you know like i said before men were the breadwinners and now men and women are the breadwinners because it's hard to live on a sole income especially nowadays and it just gets me thinking of a lot of things that we latinos say for example if i learn how to make a new dish and i'm like here like sharing with my family and they're like oh ya se puede casar like she could get married now like why is it that we expect only women to cook because men cook too but it's just our norm that we're responsible to learn how to cook 
Machismo is very dangerous because it teaches men that they shouldn't have emotions. They should always be strong. They can't be perceived as weak. They can't do things that women do. Because of machismo, a lot of the roles have already been defined for us. And it leaves no room for softness in men. And we're always taught that women should have certain roles men should have other roles and if you do something that a woman does then you're feminine and if you're tough like a man then you're masculine because of how we grow up in our culture it's hard to spot when people are being machistas if you're not aware and i think that with social media or with more people speaking up now we are more aware of ma what machismo looks like. For example, I'm sure you guys have heard like, boys don't cry, don't be a sissy. Um, in my house, I rule. Like if you're a man, it's you rule before your wife or men will be like, oh, yo no cocino, no es trabajo de hombre. Or for example, your dad will be like, this is my house. Everyone who lives in my house is going to follow my rules. Or I'm sure you've heard like if let's say your dad is absent or he passed away and you have a brother or you are the son that um, has to take care of the mother or you hear like, oh, you're the man of the house while dad's gone. And we shouldn't be putting those pressures on little boys or men it's not our responsibility to make them feel like they're responsible for the whole family because of machismo. We need to break these generational curses because, like I said, women and men both work now. You can't expect to get married and have a woman just cater to you all the time when she's working herself. And I know it's different in some roles, but it shouldn't be expected. Like, I know of people that will be like, oh, I have to go home because... Uh, my husband's coming and I have to have a hot plate for him. Machismo has set strict gender roles about who does what in each household. Like I asked my mom if my dad ever helped her with us as babies and she said he rarely did. Like occasionally he would watch us when she would shower or something like that. But besides that, he never really got up in the middle of the night when we were crying or to feed us or anything because that's just how they grew up or you hear the saying like oh así son los hombres like that's just how men are like you have to stick by them no matter what and because of machismo i feel like a lot of women stay in toxic relationships because they don't know that it's not that they can stop that that they shouldn't put up with this because like I said, it's what we grew up knowing and we got to change that and we got to change that by becoming aware. And when you bring these conversations up, just share what what you've learned growing up and what you've seen and how people are changing and not keeping this machismo culture going. And I know that it's hard to change when all, that's all we've known as we grow up, but I think it's our responsibility to teach others and to bring it up to your family members that don't realize that it's wrong or they realize that it was wrong too late. That's why a lot of people end up divorced later in life because they start seeing like, oh, not every man's like this. Some men help and men are having emotions now and are becoming familiar with their emotions and it's okay to have emotions and we're we're trying to unlearn that it's up to us and the people in our lives to figure out how to work on ending this machismo culture so that's all i have for you guys today i hope you have a wonderful week and don't forget to follow me on instagram at unbreakable latina and on tiktok as well and please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast so you can get a notification when I upload the next episode. Thank you guys so much for listening.